Apple Safari browser is one of the most simple and powerful browsers on the market. With its sleek interface, lightning fast performance, and robust privacy features, Safari is great for handling your basic browsing requirements, but also has more advanced capabilities if you're a power user and looking to use the app to segregate your browsing sessions and stay organized. I'm going to run through all of Safari's features, including five tips I guarantee you didn't know, to make sure you're able to use the app to its full potential and help improve your workflow. So let's get straight into it. What's up guys, this is Shiv, and welcome back to another video. Now, before we dive into Safari's features, I want to talk about your online privacy. It's very common for data brokers to sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, and even health records are all available online. And that's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. Aura also does so much more to protect me and my family from online threats I can't see. I get other features like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft, insurance, and more without having to download several different apps. It's really easy to set up, and best of all, I get everything at one affordable price. To try out Aura's features, you can go to aura.com forward slash shiv to sign up for a two week free trial, which is also linked in the description below. Now back to the video. Safari's simple app interface is one of its biggest strengths. When you open the app, you'll see the page you most recently accessed along with the toolbar along the bottom. Here's tip number one. To refresh your current page, simply swipe the page down until you see the loading wheel start to turn and let go. In the top layer of the toolbar, starting from the left, you have the AA icon, which lets you manage your Safari extensions, so you can see I've got the PayPal Honey extension enabled, access a privacy report, which gives you data on how many trackers Safari has prevented from profiling you, basic website settings, request a desktop version of the current website, hide the toolbar, a couple of accessibility features, and the ability to increase or decrease the font size on the page. Then you have the URL bar, which, when you click on the URL, it shows your favorites for easy access to your favorite websites. If you start to scroll, it also shows your frequently visited sites, attachments and documents that were shared with you through iMessage, privacy report, reading list, recently closed tabs, and tabs open on your other iCloud link devices. Because of continuity, Safari works seamlessly and syncs your passwords, bookmarks, history, tabs, and more across Mac, iPad, iPhone, and Apple Watch. This is a really great feature because it helps bring your whole Apple ecosystem together, letting you access websites you're browsing on your MacBook or iPad right here on your iPhone. Finally, on the right, you have the refresh button. On the lower layer of the toolbar, you have the back and forward buttons, which leads me to tip number two. Instead of going back and forward one page at a time, holding these buttons gives you a list of the websites you've previously visited, letting you navigate to a specific website directly instead of continuously pressing back or forward. In the middle is a share button, and this gives you a lot of sharing options. If you press options, you can choose whether to share the page as a PDF or web page. Although if you choose the automatic option, it typically shares as a web page. And then you've got the option to add the web page to your reading list and as a bookmark. So if you click in here, it lets you rename your bookmark and choose where to save it. You can also add it to your favorites, add to quick note, find a word on the web page, and even add it to your home screen. By doing that, you'll then have a shortcut to this web page directly from your home screen, which is great for frequently visited websites. Time for tip number three. Instead of finding a word through the share option, you can just type the word you're looking for in the URL and then scroll down to on this page. Pressing markup lets you annotate and highlight the web page and save it as a PDF in your files. And you can print and even find products on Amazon from here. Then you've got the bookmark button where you can access your bookmarks, reading list and history. And finally, the tabs button to the right. Tabs are much more powerful than they initially seem. Firstly, there is basic tab management. If you press the tab button to the right, this shows all your open tabs in your personal tab group. To add a new tab, just press the plus button in the bottom right. 
To close a tab, press the X in the top right of it, and to open a private session in which your history isn't recorded, just swipe over to the private browsing group. Pressing the person icon in the middle leads us nicely into tab groups. These are great when you're working on a project or planning a holiday. You can see my personal tab group has 48 tabs open, which is admittedly too many and not very organized. And this is just my general day-to-day -day searches and websites. However, the next tab group is called Iceland, and I use this when I want to specifically plan for my trip to Iceland. You see, when I click on this tab group, it hides all my personal tabs and opens all the tabs I specifically added to my Iceland tab group, such as the best Northern Lights tours and Iceland weather forecasts. To add a tab group, you can either press on new empty tab group, which will let you name the new group and add tabs to it manually, or if you've already started working on a project but forgotten to create a new group, you can select new tab group with 48 tabs. So once you've picked a name for this group, it will add all the tabs from your personal tab group into this one. Tip number four. Let's say you're already on a page and want to add it to an existing tab group. Just hold down the tab button, which will show your tab groups, and move your current tab to a particular tab group. So I can move this tab on Iceland's best driving routes to the Iceland tab group. From this menu, you can also create a new tab group with just the current tab. And to switch tab groups, just go to your open tabs by pressing on the tab button or swiping up on the URL bar and swipe to your next tab group. Tab groups are also really useful on Safari for Mac OS. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like a separate tutorial for MacBook. Here's tip number five. We all know you can swipe between tabs to quickly access your previous or next web page, but did you know you can easily just click on the end of the previous or next URL bar to switch to it too? Or if you're on your most recent tab, just swipe left to open a new one. The next great feature on Safari is profiles, and you access this by pressing the person icon as well. Having different profiles for Safari is great for organization and lets you segregate your browsing sessions, allowing you to separate your history, extensions, tab groups, favorites, cookies, and more. It's like having two separate Safari apps in the same browser, which you can quickly switch between. For example, I've got two separate profiles specifically called personal and work. You can customize your favorites, home screen, and more in each profile to tailor it to your exact needs. So when I'm in my personal profile, my favorites include SeatGeek and Netflix. Whereas in my work profile, I've got Gmail, YouTube Studio, and Aura. And remember, my browsing history stays independent and specific to that profile. To create a new profile, this is done through settings, Safari, scrolling down to profiles, then pressing new profile. From here, you can choose a name, icon and color and decide what your favorites are for that new profile and how to open new tabs. So that wraps up my in-depth look at Safari for iOS and how to maximize its features to help improve your workflow. I hope you found this guide helpful and informative and if you did, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on all things tech and productivity. Let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts on Safari or some tips of your own and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.